accusations, suspicion, and threats. Those have characterized ties between Pakistan and the United States over the past 10 years. Once allies who collaborated against the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan, Islamabad and Washington have drifted apart, blaming each other of being trigger happy and dishonest. At the heart of that dispute is the Taliban, the anti-U.S. conservative Islamic group that ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001. It gave refuge to al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden, who claimed responsibility for the September 11th attacks in which more than 3,000 people were killed in New York, Washington, and Pennsylvania. In response to those killings, the U.S. and its allies invaded Afghanistan in October of 2001 and drove them from power. Ten years later, NATO says it has been unable to wipe out the Taliban because the militants are allegedly getting sanctuary and protection across the border in Pakistan. Critics believe the Taliban is considered an ally of the Pakistani Army and the intelligence agency, the ISI. Both organizations are blamed for supporting and arming the group in the 1990s. For its part, Islamabad says it's committed to stabilizing Afghanistan and dismisses U.S. accusations as paranoia. Relations have also plummeted in the face of the growing number of U.S. drone strikes inside Pakistan's northwestern border since 2004. The White House maintains that it's targeting religious extremists. But Islamabad condemns those strikes as a violation of its sovereignty and says a disproportionate number of civilians are being killed. Last year, American commandos raided a compound in the Pakistani city of Abbottabad and killed bin Laden, renewing a long-held belief in U.S. government circles that Islamabad is sympathetic to the Taliban and al-Qaeda. Things took a turn for the worse last November when NATO helicopter gunships killed 24 Pakistani soldiers at a border checkpoint. Islamabad immediately closed all NATO supply routes through Pakistan, only reopening them in early July following an apology by U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Joining me now to discuss this very complex relationship is Wendy Chamberlain, former U.S. Ambassador to Pakistan. She was in Islamabad when the U.S. and its allies invaded Afghanistan, and Ambassador Chamberlain played a key role in securing Pakistan's cooperation in the war effort. And we want to welcome you to the show. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Mike. Take me back in time uh, to 9-11. So many Americans have, exp you know, their own memory is very fresh. But you were there in Pakistan. Uh, what happened and what was your reaction? Well, I'll tell you what. I have not been in Pakistan for very long. I had only arrived as ambassador to Pakistan a month earlier in August of, uh, mid-August of 2001. Um, and I was just getting to know the people and the President Musharraf, General Musharraf at that time. Uh, we were, uh, of course, everyone was sh shocked at 9-11, um, but we knew instantly in Isla the Embassy of Islamabad that we would be at the heart of the crisis. We knew instantly that it was al-Qaeda, that it was Osama bin Laden, and we knew that the relationship with Pakistan suddenly became the most important bilateral relationship in the world. So you're watching the imagery, and is the shock and horror setting in, or is it automatically you go into diplomacy mode, look, I'm going to be a key player here? Oh, we went into diplomacy mode. I, I actually saw the first, uh, I missed seeing the first airplane uh, hit the tower. My daughter saw it, and she says, Mommy, come quick. Uh, and we sat down together and watched as the second plane hit. And at that moment, I called the entire country team, my senior staff, over to my residence because we had the, uh, the CNN feed there. We did not have it in the embassy. And so we had uh, the, uh, the crisis planning mode right there in my small uh, living room in the residence while my daughters did their homework. Um, but we also knew something else. We knew that the crisis was in Washington. The Pentagon was on fire. The crisis was in New York. It was not in Islamabad yet. Uh, so we couldn't call for instructions. We had to take our own measures. And uh, one of our first measures was to try to get uh, our Consul General out of Kabul. He has, uh, had, I had sent him to Kabul to try to negotiate with the Taliban. Two young missionary girls had been arrested uh, a couple of weeks earlier. So uh, we know that President Bush uh, went to Capitol Hill and said, either you're with us or you're against us. Uh, do you get a tip off that he's going to say that? Do you go to Musharraf and say, are you with us or against us before or after he makes that statement? Well, I think the first time it was said to a Pakistani was uh, Deputy Secretary Armitage to the head of the, uh, the military uh, intelligence forces, the ISI. And then I was under instructions to say it to Musharraf on September 13. But I had already met Musharraf, and I had already had a good relationship with him. 
So when I met with him, I said, I, I of course followed out my instructions from Washington. And I said, are you with us or are you against us? But look, we've met, we've talked. I know what your aspirations are for your country. I, I know that uh, uh, you want to end terrorism and that you think that uh, the, uh, the terrorism coming across and the instability in Afghanistan undermines Pakistan. So let's work together on this. Let's find a mutual interest. Uh, of course you're with us, essentially, is what I said. And, and he said yes. And he said, yes, we support you unstintingly. And is that began a very important partnership. I is that answer still the same? Well, I would say it's not unstintingly. I would say that it's become very conditional over the years. Uh, I don't think it's any secret that the uh, U.S.-Pakistan relationship has deteriorated. It's rather rocky. It's uh, strained. Um, but both parties understand that there still is mutual interest in not letting this relationship completely uh, fall off the table. What do you think's contributed to that? I mean, we, there's so many issues, but I mean, if you were to list your top 10 hits, I mean, what do you think has contributed the most to that? Well, I think there's a different political culture. Uh, certainly, I would describe the political culture in the United States of, of building unity, of building patriotism, as one that uh, emphasizes the positive. Uh, we, we, we believe in the American dream. We have a positive um, message for our people, and that gives us unity. Uh, sometimes I wish the Pakistanis would feel the same way, but I, and sometimes I worry that what unifies Pakistan is an adversary. Uh, for years it's been the adversary with India. Now, of course, it's India and the United States. Uh, I, I don't think that's healthy for a nation, but, I, but it, it is a different approach.